and the second one is about acquittals and what happens thereafter and it basically talks about the right to be forgotten what is the right to be forgotten you see uh, one has been accused of doing something wrong criminal case has been filed tried your havana has been acquitted but one will always be remembered as a person who was tried not as a person who was acquitted so the reputation damage has already been done so abraham lincoln described character as a tree and reputation as its shadow the tree will always be what it is but the shadow we see depends on where we stand and the angle of the light so the observer's point of view which is what is influenced by the media and uh, you know obiter dicta as they are called uh, passing comments by courts of law during a judgment such things create and and then uh, what is said in the social media by way of comments etc they can have a very damaging effect and benjamin franklin the famous uh, pol- uh, american uh, philosopher and political leader he said it takes many good deeds to build a good reputation but only one bad one to lose it now that bad one may also may not have been committed but if it is seen to have been committed it's bad enough so this article says it is in the opposite the editorial page incidentally it uh, the supreme court some time ago held that the right to be forgotten is part of the right of privacy which is guaranteed by the indian constitution and in one judgment the court held in the delhi high court held that uh, you see on the one hand the public has a right to know what is happening uh, in society and particularly courts are supposed to operate in the public domain because they must be seen to be transparent fair and just and uh, observed and uh, believed to be that so here but the court says that the right to be forgotten must be balanced with the right of the public to know what um, what the court is wanting to say so both are there is a little trade off between the two so what the supreme court said in its earlier judgment was that the right to forget to be forgotten will apply for instance if some information which is posted on the social media or in a written in a judgment is of no legitimate interest to the common public it may be irrelevant information secondly it may be incorrect who knows thirdly it may not be necessary for the person who is wanting to read it or who is able to access it and it may not be relevant for them so in such circumstances information need not form part of the public domain now for instance if a person as a teenager or as a child performed some embarrassing acts which he put in the social media at that time later on he wants to withdraw it and he requests that site please delete this if the site refuses it there is no remedy available today in the law except perhaps filing a suit for defamation man antam kada paru nashtam dava anchepi atuvandi edha cheyalasthundi that is the unfortunate part but if the same person is holding a public office then it is perfectly legitimate for a site to uh, carry it and for people to access it because a public person has lost the right to privacy so but he can always a person can ask a site to withdraw the um, post made by him but if another person has put uh, posted it what is the remedy as i said it's probably only the defamation suit so in fact all this started in the united states when during the civil war one newspaper carried news about public carnage when hundreds of people were killed during the war and then one court fined heavily the new york times then the times went in appeal to the supreme court which observed that you see uh, no court can order the deletion of uh, something which is published and uh, because it observed that public scrutiny acts as a check against judicial caprice that is mischievous or you know inefficient uh, judgment and helps in enhancing the confidence of the public in the fairness and objectivity of the judicial system and uh, so therefore some portions of a judgment may be ordered to be removed if the right to be forgotten is applicable but removing the whole judgment which is what the delhi high court did in the case being examined in this article appears to be an extreme case 
And peculiarly, you will find when you read the article that the Delhi High Court, while ordering its earlier judgment to be deleted, because it wanted to protect the privacy of the individual, kept on quoting that individual's name in its own judgment, defeating the whole purpose of the judgment. This is what is called, um, you know, it's a law in uh, operation, it's called the Streisand effect, where in attempting to hide something, you have an unintended effect of actually publicizing it or censorship, which is backfiring. So all rights, as we know, are subject to restrictions, but efforts to misuse it or exploit it must be uh, sort of curbed by judicial intervention. So finally, there's a very good saying by one John Wooden, a philosopher, that be concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are. Well, your reputation is merely what others think you are. But unfortunately, in society, it matters also quite a lot about what others think of you, which is what the right to be forgotten is all about. So this is what the two articles say today. I'll be happy to take any questions or doubts now.